What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist, and we're here with Gersh One. I said we because it's me and you guys. Yeah. With me. We're all together. Mm -hmm. We're all in this together. Something, something. Yeah. And welcome back to another For the Greater. <laughs> this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, just comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get those questions first. That is what Nikoe Nikoe did. He asks, could Farsight Sword be used to permakill perpetuals, at least in theory? Um, so, <laughs> well, I guess, yeah, let's explain what perpetual is in case you don't know. And what's so special about the sword of Farsight? Yes. So Farsight Sword was found on the dead world of Arthas Moloch. Its origins are unknown, but it's rumored to either be Chaos or Necron in origin. And what this blade can do is that it steals the life force of whatever it kills. So like, let's say a human was supposed to die at age 69, and they're currently 60. So those nine years that they were supposed to live get added to the wielder of the blade, in this case, Farsight. That doesn't really make sense, because if Farsight's killing them, weren't they supposed to die then and there? Well, I think it, it is, if kind of like the um, what was the that one movie or you know the series of movie where like somebody would escape death, but then death would follow them. Oh, one night in Paris. <laughs> sure, that one. <laughs> but it's one of those things where like, should this person have missed the sword or like missed Farsight, mm -hmm. encountering Farsight, he would have continued to live, and that extra bit would then be added on because that's how Farsight has been able to live way longer than any Tau. The, yeah. the average life expectancy of a Tau is 30 years. Mm -hmm. That's short. That is short. That's shorter than us. Yeah. Um, so and, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make sense why this, like, I don't know. But anyway, I guess you explained it. <laughs> yeah. So once he gets that, uh, he just, it just accumulates, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then he just, it, technically he is everlast or ever what is it called he's a perpetual in the sense that he has this sword but it's not an innate thing like no like he could still die yeah his yeah, yeah. well yeah exactly he, yeah like he gets hit by a last cannon he's dead yeah he's dead, he's dead. yeah um but then what ends up happening is if he kills a perpetual does he just gain that everlasting life and based on what we have been explaining the sword's powers can do yeah Mm -hmm. uh, because if you kill a perpetual, the perpetual will come back to life, sure. But the act of murder still happened. So after, um, so going back to that whole thing is if the sword never ha would have killed that perpetual, mm -hmm. how long would that perpetual would have, how long would he have lived? Yeah, it's a tongue twister. Forever. Yeah. Uh, so technically, Farsight should live forever. Right. Um, but then perpetualism seems to be given and taken, like what happened with... Um, Jonathan Grammaticus. Yeah. Because he was given the power to be a perpetual and then it was taken away from him. So I wonder then, because like this is all like theory, mm -hmm. um, if Farsight kills a perpetual, the perpetual comes back to life. When he comes back to life, does that mean that the energy that was stolen from the sword or by the sword just goes back into that perpetual? Because that could be the case too. Like right. it's just back and forth. Yeah. Kind of like, uh, in, what is it? Uh, unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Like what happens there? Yeah, and I don't really remember, because when Vulcan died, Vulcan was also a perpetual. I wonder how long it took him from being, like, burned alive to, like, being, okay, Vulcan. Yeah. Because um, it seems to, like, because he was being tortured and stuff on uh, the ship of uh, the Night the Hunter, Hunter yeah. Corvus Corox. But then when he re-entered the planet and he basically came in like a meteorite, it took him a long time to recover from that. But it seemed like him coming back from being incinerated or beheaded was a lot shorter. So I guess it depends on the amount of damage taken. Yeah. Because yeah, when he came in from like the atmosphere, he was a charred husk. Right. And that took a long time. And I think they had to find like a relic or something for him to come back. So like in theory, if Farsight wanted to do this, or like in theory, like if that's the case where Farsight can only be a perpetual as long as the other perpetual doesn't regenerate. Mm -hmm. Then in theory, like they, he could slice the head of Vulcan. Let's say Vulcan is the perpetual that he kills. He slices the head of Vulcan and then puts it in like some type of incinerary like device that just constantly burns. Mm -hmm. And Vulcan has no opportunity to regenerate. Then in that situation, yeah, then I guess he could continue to live. Right. Um, yeah. 
That could be it. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. And then he uses like the charred remains of a Primarch to fuel his battle suit. That'd be badass. That's grim dark. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think like in other universes or in other worlds, has there ever been a perpetual like being who gets his perpetualness stolen from him? Um, and what are the rules for that? But for yeah. some reason, like all I can think of that Adam Sandler movie with <laughs> Click. Uh, no, <laughs> that's a good one though. Waterboy. No, the other one. He's the devil. Little little Nicky. Nicky. Little Nicky. Yeah. Oh, those Dicky. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't even think he's a perpetual. He's just a Satan spawn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Quién sabe? Help us out in the comment section below. Yeah, theories are fun to talk about because there's no real answer. Exactly. Next question. Uh, this one is by Alistair Smith. Quieren bailar esta noche? Vamos a dot dot dot. It would make my year if you can do the dance. That, I don't know what dance, dance it is. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what. I mean, I'm on TikTok, but I don't really. <laughs> I guess because I think it's a one mind syndicate TikTok, so we post uh, Warhammer 40k lore, and because you guys follow us, our algorithm is affected by what you guys um, also view. Uh, so I don't get those, like, uh, dance videos anymore. I mostly get, like, gun videos and um, Marvel and mm. DC stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. I don't know the dance. And I, I would dance. But I don't know it. This next one is by The Big One. How can I earn enough money to buy both Warhammer 40k miniatures and have enough dinero left over for my thoughts and hoes? So because of inflation, we are in a really interesting spot um, where I feel like right now the price of goods are high, but they're not that high. I think like right now you could get a job at Walmart and get paid $20. So you need to capitalize on that and buy now. <laughs> so work 40 hours at Walmart, Walmart, Walmart for um, what is that? Damn, $800 a week? <laughs> With those $800 a week, buy 40K stuff and then just chill. Mm -hmm. Because next year, that 40K stuff is going to be more expensive. It always is. If inflation does hit. And even if it doesn't, GW still raises prices. Exactly. <laughs> Invest in 40K. Forget Pokemon. Forget crypto. Forget gold. 40K. What was his question, though? How can he find a balance between 40K and thoughts and a hose? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Just uh, work 40 hours at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also, don't go for like the $300 hose. Go for that $60 happy ending at your local Asian massage parlor. Next question. Uh, this one's by Goferia Rebels. Sup? How you guys doing? And is that your dog and or dogs I hear? Yeah. My question is, can any Space Marine, Sister of Battle, Guardsman, or other Imperial troop retire? Or do they have to fight and die to be retired? Fight and die. For the most part. Well, if you're a Space Marine, yeah. Um, if you're a Sister of Battle, yeah. Um, it's very rare for, ha for any of these Imperial people to be able to just sit back and retire on a pleasure pan planet. Um, it happens mostly with the Imperial Guard. And you have to already be like high ranking. Mm -hmm. And even then, they'll probably still call you to do like one final mission. Yeah. And you end up dying. Yeah. <laughs> or it's like that Vin Diesel movie with, uh, I think it's called Pacifier. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, his dad is <laughs> Gilligan from Gilligan's <laughs> Island. Um, oh, but just to add to that, with the Sisters of Battle, remember that there's different orders. So it could be order, what is the Sisters of Battle? Like the main one. Whatever that battle or order is, there's also a Hospitaller, and then there is Hospitaliter. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, Hospitaller. And then there's another one where it's like a, like a, not a diplomat, but like a translator and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you can switch roles, and you, you're not in like the thick of the fighting. Now you're just kind of in the back bureaucratic sense, I guess. Right. You're more of an office than on the field. Yeah. Next question comes from Zamia. Can a black hole exist in the warp, and can it hurt the chaos gods or their planets? Because black holes work on mass, and mass is not etheric, it is an actual thing. Uh, I mean, it has mass. I would say uh, no. But we don't know, because we don't really understand black holes, right? 
or the warp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yes, maybe right. I don't know. We gotta we gotta ask Neil Tyson DeGrasse. Yeah. This is an interesting one by Cole Adams. He says, speed round. Answer 10 questions in less than a minute. All right, we're going to start at 10, 20, 18, 19. Boom. Could all of the current humanity kill one space marine if they were on Earth today? Yes. Best chaos demon. What's uh, Fulgrim. Fulgrim, okay. Was Magnus wrong? Yes. N no. Uh, did the emperor need to hug his kids more? No. Yes. What's new, Pussycat? Whoa. whoa, 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 whoa. Is Drago a Primarch incognito? No. No. Besides the Emperor and Gods, besides the Emperor and Gods, what's the strongest character alive? Drago. Yep. Where's Primarch to come back for Gilliman, causing a divide amongst the Loyalists? Uh, Lehman Russ. Yeah, I can see Lehman Russ doing that. Could Orcs birth a new Chaos God like the Eldar? No. No. Would a female space marine require all the same alterations and a male? No. No. A female with testosterone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And time. We actually did it with three seconds to spare. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. I didn't really ever think about that, that like the gene seed organs of a space marine would not work within the, the body of a woman. Mm -hmm. It would just make the, the woman a male. Right. Because of like, you know, the chest plate basically sealing up. What happens to the boobs? They seal up. Well, space marines still have boobs, though. But they're sealed. Do you think, uh, instead of the boobs being filled with that gelatinous substance, um, there would be, like, ferrocrete or black carapace around the boobs, so it's, like, super hard and, like, rigid, so it, she can use it as a weapon? Yeah. More angles means more bullets being deflected. Beautiful. This one's by All Might. Can a perpetual survive getting turned into a chaos spawn? Hmm. I mean, they would survive in the sense that the chaos spawn wouldn't die, but a chaos spawn, I mean, well, it does die. Uh <laughs> right, because a spawn would die, but then they get re-manifested by like, going back into the warp and then coming back into real space. That would just suck for those. I mean, it sucks to be a, a chaos spawn, period. Mm -hmm. And for all those that don't know, a chaos spawn is basically a sorcerer or some type of worshiper of of uh, chaos that ends up just overflowing with chaos or with warp energy and instead of being able to control it their bodies just start to mutate and mm -hmm. get all messed up it's almost it's almost like if you had a pocket or if you had a radioactive device in your pocket that was just emitting radioactive waves you would get cancer in a couple days yeah um or the funny way is the chaos gods gives you so many boons that your body can't take it and you turn into this blob yeah it's like, oh, you want horns? Oh, horns. Tentacles? Yeah, tentacles. More testicles? There you go. Testicles on your horns <laughs> that are on your tentacles? Right. And then you're just like a blob of fleshy appendages. Which isn't a bad thing. Right. Bunny Hop is asking, with the way that Call has been pushing technology towards heretical methods, do you think he could end up hurting the Imperium if he ended up becoming the Fabricator General of Mars? Based on the fact that he's been around for 10,000 years and he hasn't <laughs> really hurt the Imperium as bad as the Imperium has hurt itself, no, I think we're fine. Yeah, he's done a lot of cool ingenuity advancements for technology, even if people are saying, oh, that's heretical, oh, he's affecting the Gene Sea, that's supposed to be sacred. No, I mean, look what he's doing. He's giving humanity a better chance against chaos. Yeah, and also he wouldn't become Fabricator General because according to this book, the, I just got the Adeptus Mechanicus book, um, he turned down the role of Fabricator General because he doesn't want the bureaucratic side to like stop him from experimenting with things. Mm -hmm. So if anything, becoming a Fabricator General would make him boring. He'd be like Biden. <laughs> boring. Next question comes from Antoine Ewig. Is Sound Alchemist's wife doing creepy pastas this year and is there going to be any shit your pants scary ones in the work? Um, I could ask her, see if she wants to do it again. Um, but yeah, I guess we do got to start thinking about creepy pastas in July. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, for we really do. <laughs> um, I, I think every single year I've told myself around this time, like, start working on creepy pastas now, so that when December comes, December, you, I mean, uh, <laughs> October comes, you can just pump out a bunch of creepy pastas. Instead, he's pumping out something else. Yeah, the most I've gotten <laughs> is two, mm. and that's not in a day. 
Um, but yeah, I really like creepy pastas, and I just like Halloween in general. Um, so it's cool to be doing. Like last year, I did the thirteen. Mm-hmm. Um, was it thirteen days of Halloween where I talked about like scary s- tropes and made them fit forty k stuff. Talked about Halloween Town. That was fun. <laughs> Halloween Town. It's not in Disney Plus. Oh, is it? Yeah. I gotta watch that. All of them. I I watched the first one. Mm-hmm. That's the one. The one that really matters. Yeah, but you should. Yeah, we need to get on that. Mm-hmm. And you guys need to continually remind us. Yeah, let us know what genres of horror you want us to go into. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you want like slasher type stuff, or do you want more like? Was it like Cthulhu mythos stuff? Right. HP Lovecraft type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, next question comes from Tony Tony. How would you like to see the lion return, and who would you like the lion to um, really let rip on and big love from the UK, bros? We love the UK. Do you live well. on a flat? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call apartments, right? I think so, yeah. Um. Yeah. How do you how do you want the lion to return? It'd be cool if the lion came back on a lion. Yeah, on a lion. While that lion is on a bigger lion, who is fighting a wolf that is being carried on by Lehman Russ, and then the lion jumps off of all those lions and soccer punches. Not sucker, but soccer, soccer. punches Lehman Russ. Um, because that's what happened back in the day. Oh yeah, that's true. And then Lehman Russ just got up and started laughing, and mm-hmm. now the rivalry is forever. It's done. It would be kind of poetic if uh, the lion returned in a way like this already happened, but like the second burning, or no, the um, when Magnus attacked um, Prospero. No, Fenris. Well, not, yeah, Fenris. Uh, it would have been nice if the lion returned and was like, "I'll save you guys," even though I'm in like a perpetual angerness. <laughs> towards you guys right but it didn't happen because then i mean yeah that is cool because it squashes their beef you get a primark returning fighting against another primark um and everybody's happy yeah except for uh the fallen i guess yeah they just gotta get up (laughs) (laughs) yeah but uh and then what was his last question well who would you want him to let it rip to i guess magnus right yeah they they play in blade blades now yeah (laughs) let it rip Next question. Uh, this one is by Ranchi Spaghetti. If you could bring back one type of technology from the 40k universe and bring it into our own time, what would it be and why? Hmm. I think mechadendrites for me, just because I think they're cool. I've always liked doc- Dr. Octopus's uh, <laughs> tentacles. And that's what mechadendrites are. <laughs> yeah. And also, I could be taller. That'd be nice. You could be a baller. I could. Shot collar. <laughs> I don't really know. I don't remember that song. No. I remember the video to that song, but I don't remember the song. Um, it'd be pretty cool to have like teleporter technology. Yeah. Where sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> sometimes you like come out a squig for some reason. Because mm-hmm. um, that'd be really cool. Because like I feel like if you have the ability to teleport stuff and like shipments and stuff like that, trying to see what comes out of it would be really cool. Um, because it could be something like we have no idea what it is and we like learn from it and advance technology that way. Or it could be an alien species and now it's like, have you guys seen the movie The Mist? It'll be just like that. Is that why those aliens came out? Mm-hmm. Because it was a teleporting machine? Well, I don't know what it was. But all they were saying is that the military was doing experiments on like a mountain or something. And like they opened a portal to that dimension and they came out. Hmm, damn. Um, you just got me thinking about teleportation and then how uh, Terminators teleport, but mm-hmm. when they teleport, they have a, um, what is it called, the Homer? Maybe? Yeah, um, uh, from the Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you had that ability, like let's say it was just like a belt that you wore, mm-hmm. and it would teleport you back to that position, that one position, though. Where would you want that position to be? Exactly. Doggy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, w- w- would you pick a specific spot? You would have to. What would you pick? That's what I'm trying to think. You get the entire world. Right. But you'd have to get there first. Because you can't just say, oh, I'm going to go to my space station on the moon. It's like, bro, you got to build a space station, go up to the moon, put that Homer there, and then... Yeah. Let's say you could, though. Let's mm-hmm. say, like, that's not the the issue. The issue is, like, where to place this thing that you can put anywhere in the world. And you got to make sure nobody messes with it, because what if they put it in, like, the refrigerator, and then you teleport inside there? You, then you're covered in uh, pot bellies. <laughs> Um, but 
also remember, because I guess the opposite is true, that if you do put um, your Homer up in uh, the moon and you teleport there, you might have like a base and everything, but how are you going to get back? <laughs> right, because you only have one. Yeah. One Homer. Mm-hmm. It's like you teleport using your Homer and you're like, oh, dope. dope. There you go. <laughs> this whole time, I wasn't even thinking about your <laughs> parameters. I'm just like, how, how can I get the dough joke out of there? I would do Popeyes. And that's good. Yeah. Where in Popeyes? In the restaurant area, not like, and obviously like in a corner where, because it got to be somewhere where like nobody's anybody. gonna be, or there won't be a table, because then you'll teleport like in the table or something like that. It could be like off to the corner of one of the Popeyes, or like in a booth that looks always dirty. Mm-hmm. I'll tell the workers, don't ever clean this table. <laughs> I just teleport on top of it. Yeah, I can see that being pretty cool. I was just thinking like putting it at work. Because then it's like, oh, I'm going to be late for work. Eh. Right. Yeah, that'd be cool. And then you could also go like, and then appear like at night and then just steal a bunch of shit. <laughs> but then I got to get out of there. Oh, that's true. I think it's easier to exit a store than it is to enter. Like when you're you're a thief. <laughs> really? Well, yeah, because I like, think of all of, the doors. Well, I've seen a lot of thieves get in but can't get out. Like, like they try to kick down the door and it's like that anti-shatter glass and they're stuck in there. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Because I always figured, like, you would just push the door mm-hmm. and then it opens. Because they have emergency um, oh, that's true. protocols that you're not supposed to, like... Because what if the person... What happens if, like, you are stealing a place or you are robbing a place and fire starts and you get burned? Can you sue the company or the store for not having the proper, like, fire exit and stuff I'm like that? I'm pretty sure you could. I got an idea how to make money. (laughs) And those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. As always, this is the Sound Alchemist. Gershwin. And we're out of here. Yeah.